And he is an experienced president, but he's not the only one. He does have inexperienced advisors, but he's not the only one who's had inexperienced advisors. Uh, still, um, there are things, there are uh, uh, hypotheses that we can pull from the history on this. The more uh, the president tried to assert independence from the, inter from the national security agencies or national security bureaucracies, State Department, Defense Department, um, uh, intelligence community to, to put their own personal stamp on foreign policy, if they're, particularly if they're experienced, the more they're vulnerable to being manipulated by outside powers. Um, and this, I think you can, you can broadly um, understand that any president, including experienced one, are open to being manipulated by outside powers. There are a lot of reasons for it. One reason is that, uh, frankly, um, even when we assert that something is a priority for us in policy terms like ISIS or Iran, none of this is really existential for us. It's an important policy, but it's not going to be something that is existential. For the rulers of the Middle East, these policies are existential policy. They live and die by them. They, are, uh, they, they know the backyard better than we could ever do. Uh, they, um, uh, every single day, that's their focus. They, they, they wake up in the morning thinking about it. They go to sleep thinking about it. Uh, and it's sustained. It's not like uh, you know, we, we can have attention span of uh, sometimes one issue uh, overtaken by another. It's sustained. And therefore, they have more capacity, actually, to define in the relationship uh, a course that could be sustained over time and undermine what we want to do. But it's, it's especially true uh, when, the, when the president is inexperienced, his advisors are inexperienced, and he's trying to assert independence from bureaucracies that have a historical memory. And so in that case, what happens? Uh, leaders overseas read the president's vulnerabilities, not just his inexperience, but his political vulnerabilities, and in the case of Trump, even personal vulnerabilities. And they basically make, a, they, they, they make trade. They, they play to those. For example, just to look in historical perspective, if you look at... Um, John Foster Dulles in the Eisenhower administration he goes to the Middle East. Eisenhower says communism is a big story. The Middle East didn't see communism as the big story of the day. Uh, but they knew that's what he needed politically. So they give him what he wanted in order to get American support. So you get the Baghdad Pact, which was for them essentially uh, dragging the US into their own regional fight. And for him, it was to score points on coalition on communism. When George W. Bush, uh, uh, after he went into Iraq, discovered there were no weapons of mass destruction. It became all about democracy. It became a political issue. He needed the win. He needed to show he's doing progress. So rulers will do something, uh, give him a fig leaf. They will do municipal elections or whatever, and he will claim that he's gotten that. And so here you have a president who goes in with the aim of you know, going um, ISIS. He knows that's priority, at least uh, according to public opinion polls that we conduct, uh, priority for the American public, trade, jobs. He goes in, they understand that. They give him what he wants, they give him the trade deals, they give him uh, the rhetoric, they give him the terrorism rhetoric, and they can define what that means for him because he's not able to, to define it as well. So there is that risk for sure, and I think that's part of what we're witnessing now.